Want to master grammar so you can speak properly, express yourself better, and understand more? In this video, I'll show you how to master grammar with our lessons and learning program. Let's begin. Number one, listen to the lesson conversations and explanations. In every lesson, you learn a conversation. Then, our teachers break down every word and grammar rule. So you're actually learning grammar rules in the context of conversations, and you can easily see how they're used. Once you're done, review the conversation again and again to remember what you've learned. Number two, read the bonus explanations and tutorials. With the lesson notes, you get extra grammar explanations and examples that are not presented in the lesson. After you're done with the lesson, read the lesson notes for extra review. You can even save them as PDFs so that you can access them anytime. Number three, leave a comment on the lesson. Once you've learned a grammar point, be sure to use it. Leave a comment in the comment section. Write some example sentences for practice. Our teachers will review your comment and give you feedback. Number four, unlock even more grammar lessons. If you want to find all of the grammar lessons available, visit our lesson library. Under category, choose grammar. You'll get all of the pathways and lessons dedicated to helping you learn and master sentence patterns and grammar points. So, if you're ready to finally learn a new language the fast, fun, and easy way, sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Signing up takes less than 30 seconds, and you'll start speaking from your very first lesson. If you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share it with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye! Hi, welcome to Introduction to Chinese. My name is Alicia, and I'm joined by... Hi, everyone. I'm Ray. In this lesson, you'll learn the basics of Chinese grammar. Word order refers to the order in which words are structured to form a sentence in a given language. The basic word order for English is subject, verb, object, or SVO for short. Let's break down the English sentence, I ate an apple. We can see that the subject, I, is presented first, followed by the verb, ate, and then finally the object, apple, is positioned last. This is the basic word order for sentences in English. Now let's compare that same sentence. I ate an apple in Chinese. 我吃了一个苹果. If we break down this sentence, we will have 我, I, which is a subject, 吃了, which means ate or have eaten, a verb. Next, the object, 一个苹果, an apple. So the order is subject plus verb plus object, or SVO for short. This is exactly the same order as in English. Let's try another basic sentence. I like Chinese. I is 我, like is 喜欢. Chinese is 中文, so we put the subject first, then the verb, and then the object. All together we have 我喜欢中文. Now you know the word order in Chinese. Let's try to add more components to basic words to make longer sentences. Adding a time phrase in Chinese sentences is a little different than in English. In English, we put the when phrase in the last part of the sentence. For example, I eat an apple every day. In Chinese, we put the time phrase after the subject. So we need to put every day after I. So we have 我, I, 每天, every day, 吃, eat, 一个苹果, an apple. Subject plus time phrase plus verb plus object. 我每天吃一个苹果。我的姐姐明天去美国。我的, my, 姐姐, older sister. 明天, tomorrow, 去, go to, 美国, the United States. My older sister is going to the U.S. tomorrow. 我的姐姐。明天去美国. To add places, put them after the time phrases. For example, I eat an apple every day at home. In Chinese, that's 我每天在家吃一个苹果. 
在家 means at home. So it's I every day at home eat an apple. 我每天在家吃一个苹果 Let's try another one. I was born in the U.S. in 1990. Remember subject, time, place, and then verb. 我一九九零年在美国出生。我一九九零年在美国出生。To form negative sentences, there are two ways for two circumstances. You can use 不 or 没有 We use 不 in present tense sentences, or when you don't want to do something. 我不喜欢中文 I don't like Chinese. 我不去 I'm not going. 我不吃 I don't want to eat. We use 没有 in past tense, meaning didn't or haven't done something. 我没有吃苹果。I didn't eat the apple. 我的姐姐昨天没有去美国。My older sister didn't go to the U.S. yesterday. To form yes or no questions in Chinese, it can't be easier. Just add a question marker, m, at the end of a statement. You like Chinese is, 你喜欢中文。To make it, do you like Chinese? We simply put m at the end. 你喜欢中文吗 Let's make 你每天在家吃一个苹果 a yes or no question. 你每天在家吃一个苹果吗 Now you know how to ask questions with a yes or no answer. But how do you ask questions using question words such as what, when, where, how, why, and which? Let's put the above questions words into two groups. We put what, which, and where after the verb. It's like replacing the object with a question word. For example, what do you like? 你喜欢什么？你 you 喜欢 like 什么 what? Which one do you like? 你喜欢哪个？你 you 喜欢 like 哪个 ？Which one? Where do you like? 你喜欢哪里？你 ，you 喜欢 like 哪里 ？Where? And for the rest of the question words, we put them before the verb, so it's subject, question word, verb, object. In some cases, you can omit the object to make the sentence concise. When are you going? 你什么时候去？你 ，you 什么时候 ？One 去。Go. Why are you going to the U.S.? 你为什么去美国？你 you 为什么 ？Why 去 go to 美国 the United States? How are you going to go? 你怎么去？你 you 怎么 ？How 去 go? If we have a sentence with both a time phrase and a question word, which should go first? Just remember, question words are always stuck with verbs. So in this case, it would be subject, time phrase, question word, then verb. 你明天怎么去？你 you 明天 tomorrow 怎么 how 去 go How are you going to go tomorrow? Basically, questions have the same order as SVO statements. Just remember to stick the right question words in the right places, and don't forget the question mark. Well done. Let's wrap up this lesson by recapping what we've learned. In this lesson, you learned that Chinese uses the exact same SVO word order as English. From this, you learned how to form affirmative and negative sentences, and finally, you learned how to convert an affirmative sentence into a question. We've covered only the very basics of Chinese grammar. If you're interested in learning more, check out our Chinese in Three Minutes video series. In that course, we teach you useful phrases while covering the fundamentals of Chinese grammar, and each lesson is only three minutes long. In the next lesson, we're going to introduce you to Chinese writing. See you in the next lesson. Bye. Bye. Want to speak real Chinese from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at ChineseClass101.com. 
Hi everybody, Inru here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher, where I'll answer most of your common Chinese questions. The question for this lesson is, what are traditional and simplified characters in Chinese? Do I need to learn both? Traditional characters are the original Chinese characters. They were used in China before the 1950s and are still in use in many areas outside mainland China, including Hong Kong, Taiwan, and other Southeast Asian countries that speak Chinese. To increase literacy, simplified Chinese, which has less strokes, has been adopted. It was established as the official writing system by the government in mainland China. Therefore, nowadays, simplified Chinese is used in mainland China and traditional Chinese is used mostly outside mainland China. Let's look at how traditional Chinese and simplified Chinese are different from each other. Happy, 快乐, 快乐, study, 学习, 学习, weather, 天气, 天气. Due to the similarities between the two writing systems, someone who is familiar with one writing system may be able to decipher characters in the other. Traditional Chinese is often considered to be more authentic because it's rooted directly in the ancient forms. However, it's not necessary to learn both at the same time. Just pick one depending on where you want to visit or live. How was it? Pretty interesting, right? Do you have any more questions? Leave them in the comments below and I'll try to answer them. See you in the next episode. Hi everybody, Andrew here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher, where I'll answer most of your common Chinese questions. The question for this lesson is, what is pinyin? Pinyin is the standard most commonly used phonetic system for transliterating Chinese, meaning spelling out Chinese using Roman letters. When you look up a word in a Chinese dictionary, there's always pinyin assigned to each Chinese character. It's a way to read and pronounce Chinese words through English letters. For example, Han, spelled as H-A-N, is the pinyin for the symbol Han, as in Han Zhu Ren, the Han people, an ethnic group of East Asia. Even though most Chinese people can read pinyin, it's not a substitute for the Han Zi, one of the Chinese characters. This is because pinyin is the sound system in Chinese, whereas hanzi is the writing system. Here's an example for the sentence, I can read Chinese characters in pinyin and in hanzi. 我认识汉字. Sometimes people wonder if they can only learn pinyin and ignore the actual Chinese characters. The short answer is no. Chinese books and newspapers are written with Chinese characters without the use of pinyin unless they're written for children who are still learning to read. So for Chinese beginners, you definitely want to learn pinyin rule first. Pinyin is usually made of three parts, an initial consonant, a final consisting of one or a combination of the vowels, and a tone. There's a pinyin chart for beginners to learn and memorize the consonants and vowels. We'll get into the pronunciations of some of the most difficult pinyin sounds in the later episodes. How was it? Pretty interesting, right? Do you have any more questions? Leave them in the comments below and I'll try to answer them. See you in the next episode. Hi everybody, Inru here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher, where I'll answer most of your common Chinese questions. The question for this lesson is, what are the different tones in Chinese? Many Chinese learners find the tones quite difficult because the intonation in Chinese is very special and very different from most other languages. There are four stress tones in Chinese. Let's run through them now. First tone, yi sheng, is high and steady. Ah. Uh. Second tone, er sheng, starts with a little lower pitch and goes up. Ah. Uh. Third tone, san sheng, is even lower. It first dips down, then rises. Ah. Fourth tone, si sheng, starts high, then falls sharply. Ah. In addition to the above four tones, there's a special tone called neutral tone, qing sheng. It doesn't come with any marks on top. 
to make the neutral tone, try to say it as in the first tone, except that you say it in a more light and short way, like ah. It's not only important, but crucial to master different tones in Chinese. There are so many words that come with the same pin in spelling. If you don't get the tones right, it's very likely that your mispronounced tones will lead to misunderstandings or even embarrassment. A quick example, the pinyin and tone for Han Yu is with the fourth falling tone on Han, Han Yu. The pinyin and tone for Han Yu has a second rising tone on Han, Han Yu. They sound quite close, right? But Han Yu is Chinese language and Han Yu is actually Korean language. Don't get them mixed up and be very careful with the tones. How was it? Pretty interesting, right? Do you have any more questions? Leave them in the comments below and I'll try to answer them. 我们今天就到这里,下期再见! See you in the next episode. Bye! Hello guys! Welcome to Top 25 Chinese Phrases. Hi! My name is Bao Yuting. It's the first time to see you there. Nice to meet you. 你好. Hello. 你好, the most common way. First time. 你好, 你好, 请多多关照. The more casual way to say 你好 is hi. And just like this, you meet your friends, you can say hey, 去哪儿啊? 对不起, sorry. Oh, sorry. Could you tell me where is the toilet? Oh, 对不起, 请问一下厕所在哪里? 谢谢, thank you. You like my video? Ah, 谢谢. 早安, good morning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great! We will go into Hawaii for this holiday! Yeah! 太好了! Great! 哪有? That's not true. Yu Ting, you are so beautiful. <laughs> 哪有, 哪有, I'm flattered. Mm. But in my heart, <laughs> you are right, I'm beautiful. <laughs> 加油, go for it! When your friends raising for a competition, you can say, 加油, 加油, go for it, go for it, go, go, go. 放心, don't worry. Um, Yuting, today there is nobody can cook for our dinner. Don't worry, I got it. 放心吧,包在我身上. <laughs> Actually, I, I don't know how to cook. 干嘛呢? What's up? Hey, 老王,干嘛呢? 一会儿去喝茶呀? Hmm? What's up? You, you say you want to drink a tea with me? Hmm? Okay. 好吃! Delicious! My favorite food, baking duck. Do you like baking kaoya? <laughs> baking duck. Haha. <laughs> hey, yummy, delicious. 随便你, up to you. 今晚我请客,随便你吃什么? I will treat you dinner. Uh, what you eat is up to you. Yeah. 放弃, give up. Please don't give up your dream forever. 请千万不要放弃你的梦想. Yeah, you can do it. 好的, okay. Actually, in my generation, all the friends will say okay instead of 好的. So you can just use okay. But like this. Could you come here, please? 好的, okay. Could you please help me pass this water? 好的, okay. 没什么, not much. And also for this, for this, and you can also use 没事的. It's like, oh, thank you so much for your help. 没事的, it doesn't matter, it's not that much. And also like this, oh, so sorry, I'm late again. Ah, 没事的, it's not that much. 我们走吧, 
Let's go. When you sit on the restaurant and you just finish it, and you can say say that to your friends, 我们走吧 Let's go. 怎么样 How about it? Ah,、oh, it's beautiful. 怎么样你喜欢吗 How about it? You like it? 我想 I want. Oh, my watch is broken. I want to buy a new one. 我想买一块新表。没完没了。There is no end to this. I'm my mother now. Ah, yeah. You must study hard, and then you can go to the good college. Then you can marry a good man. Then you can have a beautiful baby. Then your baby can go to the good college, and your baby can have a a good marriage, and your baby can have a good career. <laughs> 我妈妈说起来没完没了。我的妈呀 ！Oh my god! For my generation, the most common way is to say "Oh my god." Hmm. Is messy? I will try it. 我的妈呀！好辣呀！ Oh my god! It's so messy. Ambulance! 救护车！好有趣。It's so interesting. Uh、mm-hmm. huh. Ah, it's so interesting. 好有趣 Come here, come here. 肚子饿了 I'm hungry. Oh, 怎么还不下课呀？肚子饿了 I'm so hungry. 好撑 I'm so stuffed. Ah,、oh, I'm so stuffed. 好撑呀，吃太多了 Ah.、Oh. Just kidding. <laughs> 我喜欢 I like it. Oh, 我喜欢一醒来有你在身旁 Oh, this sounds is so romantic. 再见 Bye. Goodbye. But most carefully to say is 回见回见了您嘞 Okay, that's all. We did the top twenty-five Chinese phrases today. What's your favorite phrases? My favorite phrases. 好吃，嘿嘿嘿。Trust me, it's very common and very very useful. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Thank you. See you next time. You must cut there. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Yiru here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher. Where I'll answer most of your common Chinese questions. The question for this lesson is: What is the proper word order in a sentence? Unlike the pronunciation and writing system, sentence structure in Chinese is not as confusing and exotic. For most simple sentences, word order in Chinese is similar to that in English. Let's look at some basic SVO sentences, which are sentences with subject plus verb. Plus object word order. 我爱你 I love you. The subject is 我 the verb 爱 and the object 你 just like in English. 他吃面 he eats noodles. The subject is 他 the verb 吃 and the object 面 If you want to add a time phrase in a sentence, you usually put this phrase after subject. For example. 他星期二吃面 He eats noodles on Tuesdays. 我一直很爱你 I always love you. 你昨天晚上洗澡了吗 Did you take a shower last night? If you want to add a place in a sentence, like where someone does something, you also put it after subject before the verb. Let's see a couple of examples. 他在家吃面 He eats noodles at home. 我的好朋友在伦敦工作 My good friend works in London. What if we have a time and a place at the same time? Usually, we put time after the subject, then place, then verb, or verb plus object. For example, 我的好朋友去年在伦敦工作 My good friend worked in London last year. 他们上个星期六晚上在电影院看电影 They saw a movie at a movie theater last Saturday night. Of course, there are exceptions to the rules, and many times components are omitted in different cases. But the above word order is the basic foundation for sentence structure in Chinese. How was it? 
Pretty interesting, right? Do you have any more questions? Leave them in the comments below, and I'll try to answer them. 我们再见吧 Bye. Inru here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher, where I'll answer most of your common Chinese questions. The question for this lesson is: What are some useful tips for someone visiting China for the first time? Visiting China is exciting and very beneficial for your Chinese learning as well. But before you go, there are some tips I would love to share with you. Tip number one: Take very good care of your valuables, especially at train stations, bus stops, airports, busy streets, and tourist attractions. Things get stolen within seconds. That's why a lot of women carry their backpacks in front of them. Tip number two: Always bring toilet paper to public restrooms. Most Chinese public restrooms don't have toilet paper or paper towels. Some may not have hand soap either, so it's good to be prepared. Tip number three: Expect people to be rude. People may stare if you have a non-Asian face, especially at places that don't usually have foreign visitors. People may cut in line. People may spit and sneeze right in front of you. People may talk loudly in public, and smokers may smoke in non-smoking areas. Just remember, these behaviors are something that Chinese are not proud of, but are still pretty common in China. Tip number four: Internet is censored in China. That means no Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, or Google unless you use a VPN. Tip number five: Be aware of the cleanliness of some local restaurants and street food. The food may look very good, but it's very likely you'll get sick from it. Bring some medications with you just to be safe. Tip number six: Make an attempt to speak Mandarin to Chinese people. They will love it and make your stay more enjoyable. How was it? Pretty interesting, right? China is definitely a wonderful place to visit. I didn't give you these tips to scare you away. They're just something you might want to know to make your trip more pleasant. If you have visited China before, please share your tips and experience with us. We'd love to hear your stories. I'll see you next time. 我们下次再见 Bye. Hi everybody, Inru here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher, where I'll answer most of your common Chinese questions. The question for this lesson is. How do I use the final particle a、ah? in Chinese language, especially colloquial Chinese? You'll often see the particles at the end of a sentence. They usually don't have any substantive meanings themselves, but they do play a very important role in carrying out the intonation of a sentence. We call those final particles. Words like ma, ba, a, o. Are all particles that appear at the end of a sentence to show the emotions of the speaker? Today we'll be talking about one of the most common final particle, a.、Ah. Generally speaking, a、ah、can be put at the end of a greeting, a question, an exclamation, or an imperative. It can often soften the tone, strengthen the emotion, and make the conversation more colloquial. Let's look at some examples. When you want to say "Who is it?", you can say, "Shi Shi." This sounds very intense, but if you say "Shi Shi Ya," the tone is much softer and less interpersonal. To agree with someone, you can use the word "hao," "dui," "shi," etc. Many times, you will hear "hao ah," "dui ah," "shi ah" in conversations. For example. 这里的人好多啊 ，so many people here. 是啊，对啊，每天都这样。Yeah, it's like this every day. 今天天气真好啊。It's an exclamation. We use a、啊、to emphasize the fact that the weather is really very nice. 快吃啊 ，is an imperative. You will often hear parents say that to their kids to make them hurry up and eat their food. Here's another example of how to use a.、啊、动物园里有很多动物，老虎啊，狮子啊，大象啊，骆驼啊，长颈鹿啊，等等。There are lots of animals in the zoo, such as tigers, lions, elephants, camels, giraffes, and so on. A、啊、here is used when listing a series of things in spoken language. 
Generally speaking, a ah is the final particle we use in colloquial language to make the speech softer, less abrupt, and more conversational. 是不是很有意思啊 How was it? Pretty interesting, right? Do you have any more questions? Leave them in the comments below, and I'll try to answer them. I'll see you in the next episode. 我们下期再见 Welcome to Introduction to Chinese. My name is Alicia, and I'm joined by. Hi, everyone. I'm Ray. In this lesson, you'll learn the basics of Chinese grammar. Word order refers to the order in which words are structured to form a sentence in a given language. The basic word order for English is subject, verb, object, or SVO for short. Let's break down the English sentence "I ate an apple." We can see that the subject "I" is presented first, followed by the verb "ate," and then finally the object "apple" is positioned last. This is the basic word order for sentences in English. Now let's compare that same sentence. I ate an apple in Chinese. 我吃了一个苹果 If we break down this sentence, we will have 我 I, which is a subject, 吃了 which means ate or have eaten, a verb. Next, the object, 一个苹果 an apple. So the order is subject plus verb plus object, or SVO for short. This is exactly the same order as in English. Let's try another basic sentence. I like Chinese. I is 我 like is 喜欢 Chinese is 中文 So we put the subject first, then the verb, and then the object. All together, we have 我喜欢中文 Now you know the word order in Chinese. Let's try to add more components to basic words to make longer sentences. Adding a time phrase in Chinese sentences is a little different than in English. In English, we put the when phrase in the last part of the sentence. For example, I eat an apple every day. In Chinese, we put the time phrase after the subject, so we need to put every day after I. So we have 我 I 每天 Every day, 吃 eat, 一个苹果 an apple, subject plus time phrase plus verb plus objects. 我每天吃一个苹果。我的姐姐明天去美国。我的 my 姐姐 older sister. 明天 tomorrow, 去 go to 美国。The United States. My older sister is going to the U.S. tomorrow. 我的姐姐明天去美国 To add places, put them after the time phrases. For example, I eat an apple every day at home. In Chinese, that's. 我每天在家吃一个苹果在家 means at home. So it's, I every day at home eat an apple. 我每天在家吃一个苹果。Let's try another one. I was born in the U.S. in 1990. Remember, subject, time, place, and then verb. 我一九九零年在美国出生。我一九九零年在美国出生。To form negative sentences, there are two ways for two circumstances. You can use 不 or 没有 We use 不 in present tense sentences, or when you don't want to do something. 我不喜欢中文 I don't like Chinese. 我不去 I'm not going. 我不吃 I don't want to eat. We use 没有 in past tense, meaning didn't or haven't done something. 我没有吃苹果 I didn't eat the apple. 我的姐姐昨天没有去美国。My older sister didn't go to the U.S. yesterday. To form yes or no questions in Chinese, it can't be easier. Just add a question marker, m, at the end of a statement. You like Chinese is, 你喜欢中文。To make it, do you like Chinese? We simply put m at the end. 你喜欢中文吗 Let's make 
你每天在家吃一个苹果 ？A yes or no question. 你每天在家吃一个苹果吗 ？Now you know how to ask questions with a yes or no answer. But how do you ask questions using question words such as what, when, where, how, why, and which? Let's put the above questions words into two groups. We put what, which, and where after the verb. It's like replacing the object with a question word. For example, what do you like? 你喜欢什么？你 you 喜欢 like 什么 what? Which one do you like? 你喜欢哪个？你 you 喜欢 like 哪个 ？Which one? Where do you like? 你喜欢哪里？你 you 喜欢 like 哪里 ？Where? And for the rest of the question words, we put them before the verb, so it's subject, question word, verb, object. In some cases, you can omit the object to make the sentence concise. When are you going? 你什么时候去？你 you 什么时候 one 去 go. Why are you going to the U.S.? 你为什么去美国？你 you 为什么 why? 去 go to 美国 the United States. How are you going to go? 你怎么去？你 you 怎么 how 去 go? If we have a sentence with both a time phrase and a question word, which should go first? Just remember, question words are always stuck with verbs. So in this case, it would be subject, time phrase, question word, then verb. 你明天怎么去？你 you 明天 tomorrow 怎么 how 去 go How are you going to go tomorrow? Basically, questions have the same order as SVO statements. Just remember to stick the right question words in the right places, and don't forget the question mark. Well done. Let's wrap up this lesson by recapping what we've learned. In this lesson, you learned that Chinese uses the exact same SVO word order as English. From this, you learned how to form affirmative and negative sentences. And finally, you learned how to convert an affirmative sentence into a question. Hi, everybody. Inru here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher, where I'll answer most of your common Chinese questions. The question for this lesson is: What is the difference between Mandarin and Chinese? Sometimes people say they speak Chinese, and sometimes they use the word Mandarin. The two words seem almost interchangeable. Mandarin, also known as Standard Chinese (普通话), is the official language of mainland China and Taiwan. It's also one of the four official languages of Singapore. It's the national language that's taught in schools. And it's based on the standard dialect spoken in Beijing, the capital city of China. While Chinese is a more general term, it refers to a group of languages spoken by the Han people, an ethnic group of East Asia. Chinese language includes a variety of regional dialects, such as Mandarin, Cantonese, Shanghainese, etc. As a matter of fact, each town has its own dialect. When people from different areas talk to each other in their own dialect, chances are they won't be able to understand each other. For example, in Shanghainese, people greet each other by saying "no ho," whereas in Cantonese, people say "ne ho." That is why a common dialect is needed for more effective communication throughout the whole country. With a standard dialect, we can all greet each other by saying "ni hao," and nobody gets confused. Since most Chinese people speak Mandarin, when people refer to the Chinese language, they often mean Mandarin. How was it? Pretty interesting, right? Do you have any more questions? Leave them in the comments below, and I'll try to answer them. See you in the next episode. 我们下期再见吧 Bye. Hi, everybody. Inru here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher, where I'll answer most of your common Chinese questions. The question for this lesson is. How do I pronounce "e r r"? In Pinyin, there are six single vowels called finals: a, o, e, 
e, u, n. There are also numerous compound finals. These are made by combining two or three of the single vowels, or by adding an n, n, or er at the end of vowels. Here are some examples: ao, o, a, ye, u, wen, yan, yong, er, and so on. The e, u, yue are the relatively difficult ones for non-Chinese native speakers to pronounce. First, let's look at how to say the final e accurately. E sounds like the e in the. Make sure your tongue is flat and low. A lot of Chinese learners turn to curl their tongue when saying e, which is not necessary. Let's look at some examples. Ge ge, ke le, he, che. Unlike the vowel u, u has two little dots on top. To make this sound, try to round up your lips as much as you can. For example, 女儿绿色 There's a special rule concerning the omission of the two dots on u. When it follows the initials e, g, t, and c, it's spelled as u, but still pronounced as u. For example, u, 句子，去 and 必须 This rule also applies to any compound finals that starts with u. For example, 军 or 圆圈约 sounds like the combination of u and e, as in 省略虐待 Just like other vowels that start with u, you don't need the two dots on top when they come after e, g, t, c. In this case, we have 月亮决定缺少学习这些规律，你都学会了吗？多读、多听、多练。拼音其实并没有那么难。How was it? Pretty interesting, right? Do you have any more questions? Leave them in the comments below, and I'll try to answer them. 我们下期再见。See you in the next episode. Bye. Hi, everybody. Andrew here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher, where I'll answer most of your common Chinese questions. The question for this lesson is: What is the rule of pronunciation for 不 and 一 When studying Chinese, you've probably seen these two characters often, "bu" and "i." They are very, very common, but you may notice that their tones change when they come before certain words. For example, "bu" is the second rising tone in "bu yao," but it's the fourth falling tone in "bu hao." "I" as in number one is pronounced as "i," but in "i yang." It becomes the second tone. In e t, it's the fourth tone. Seems very confusing, right? Don't worry. There are some rules we can follow to use the correct tones. When bu is used alone, it's always the fourth tone, bu. When bu is followed by a character with a fourth tone, it changes to the second tone, bu. For example, bu shi. 不会，不错。When bu is followed by a non-fourth tone, which are the first, second, and third tones, it's pronounced as the fourth tone, as in 不知道，不行，不好。When e is used as a number, it's the first flat tone, as in 一二三四，第一，一号线。When e is followed by a fourth tone, it changes to the second tone. 一样，一定，一次 When e is followed by a non-fourth tone, becomes the fourth tone. 一般，一种，一点儿 Now you know the rules. How do you pronounce this phrase? Let's work backwards. The second e is followed by a fourth tone. 样 So e here should be the second rising tone, 一样 Now the bu here is followed by a second tone, 一 So bu here should be the fourth tone, 不一样 Now the first e is followed by a fourth tone bu. 
So the first E itself should be the second tone. 一不一样 So problem solved. This phrase is pronounced as 一不一样你还有什么不懂的地方吗？请给我们留言，我们一定会给你回复。How was it? Pretty interesting, right? Do you have any more questions? Leave them in the comments below, and I try to answer them. 我们下期再见。Want to speak real Chinese from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at ChineseClass101.com. Hi, everybody. Inru here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher. Where I'll answer most real common Chinese questions. The question for this lesson is, does "ni hao" really mean "hi"? "Ni hao" and "hi" are these two greetings the same? Actually, they're not. "Ni hao" in Chinese is a very formal greeting. It's usually used when people meet for the first time. You can use it in self introductions such as "ni hao." 我叫玛丽。你好，很高兴认识你。Or you can use 你好 as a phrase to get a stranger's attention when you need to ask a question or favor. For example, you need to get to some place, so you may stop a passerby by saying, 你好，请问一下电影院怎么走？ Or when you're ordering food in a restaurant, you may say, 你好，我要一份一号套餐。Well, if ni hao is used in formal situations with people you don't really know, how do you greet people you do know? Well, it's definitely not necessary to use ni hao to your best friends when you bump into them on the street. You can simply say hi to them in English or the Chinese version hi. This is essentially a translation from English. Hi is a very popular greeting among young people, so feel free to use it as you do in English. If you haven't seen your friend for a while, you may say, "Hi, Mali. 好久不见，最近好吗？" Or you can simply say their name and then continue with some small talk. For example, it's meal time. You could say, "Mali, 吃了吗？" This is a very informal greeting, but so commonly used. After all, eating is a big deal in Chinese culture. What if you're greeting someone you know, but they're your supervisor or your senior? To make it more polite, you can address them by their title, then add a "hao" after the title. Say you see your teacher. It's considered polite to greet them by saying "mou mou lao shi hao." If the teacher's name is Li, you'll say "Li lao shi hao." If you see your manager Li, you can say "Li jing li hao." Many times, when at work. Even if the person you're greeting is the same level as you, or even at a lower level, it's still common to address them by their surname followed by the title. How was it? Pretty interesting, right? Do you have more questions? Leave them in the comments below, and I'll try to answer them. 我们下期再见。Bye bye. Hi everybody, Inru here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher, where I'll answer most of your common Chinese questions. The question for this lesson is, how do I say "excuse me" in Chinese? As an English learner, I found the English phrase "excuse me" extremely useful. You can use it in many circumstances. I've been asked by my students if there is one literal translation or phrase that's like it in Chinese. Unfortunately, there isn't. In this lesson, we're going to talk about how to say "excuse me" in different circumstances. Scenario number one: You want to get someone's attention, so you can wave at them and say "ni hao." It's easy and polite. In a restaurant, you may say to a waiter, "ni hao." 点餐 If you're lost in a shopping mall and try to find the elevator, you may ask a sales lady or shopper by saying "ni hao." Scenario number two: You're passing through a big crowd. You might say, 借过一下 The literal translation for this is, borrow your way a little. So you're on a crowded train at rush hour, and you need to get off. Just elbow your way out and say, 借过一下，我下车 Scenario number three: You need to apologize. 
For example, you have to excuse yourself from a conversation to answer an important phone call, or you just sneeze really loudly. You can apologize by saying, 抱歉 or in this case of a phone call, 抱歉我接个电话，抱歉我要离开一会儿，马上就回来。How was it? Pretty interesting, right? Do you have more questions? Leave them in the comments below, and I'll try to answer them. 再见 Hi everyone, Yunru here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher, where I'll answer most of your common Chinese questions. The question for this lesson is: Does Chinese have a future tense? Just like there's no past tense in Chinese, there's no future tense in Chinese either. You can indicate something that's going to happen in the future by using the auxiliary words 会要 and or at future time phrases like 明天 tomorrow 下个月 next month and so on. 会 can be translated as will or will expect to. In comparison, 要 indicates one's intention, like to be going to or to want to. Let's look at some examples. 明晚我会去看电影。Tomorrow night I will go see a movie. 你要跟我一起去吗 ？Do you want to go with me? 下个星期我会去上海。I will go to Shanghai next week. To make negative forms, just put a 不 in front of 会 and 要 to make it 不会不要。For example, 他不会喜欢这个地方的。She won't like this place. 我不要跟你一起去上海。I am not going to go to Shanghai with you. Some more time phrases expressing the future include 下星期三 next Wednesday, 后天 the day after tomorrow, 明年 next year, 以后 in the future. 我下星期三会给你打电话。Next Wednesday, I will give you a call. 你明年要毕业了吗 ？Are you going to graduate next year? 以后我不会再来了。I will not come again in the future. How was it? Pretty interesting, right? Do you have any more questions? Leave them in the comments below, and I'll try to answer them. 我们下期再见。See you in the next episode. Hi everyone, Andrew here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher, where I'll answer most of your common Chinese questions. The question for this lesson is: How do I pronounce the pin initials C, Q, X, Z, Z, H? Most pin initials or consonants have very similar pronunciations to their English counterparts, but there are a few sounds that may not sound the way you would expect. Now let's look at some of the difficult consonants to pronounce in Chinese pinyin. C sounds like t, as in. 菜 vegetable or dish, 醋 vinegar, and 猜错 to get something wrong. Z sounds like z, as in 汉字 Chinese characters, 儿子 son, 自己 oneself. Q sounds like qi, but with a flat tongue and a flat mouth. For example, qi, energy, 钱 Money, 亲戚 relatives. Another initial sound that may be different from English or your mother tongue is X. It sounds like she, but once again your tongue is flat here. She, west, 小 small, 谢谢 thank you, and 学校 school. Now let's look at the double initial Z H. You may see it in some very common Chinese family names like Zhang, Zhou, Zheng, and in this word, Zhongguo, China. Z H sounds like the first sound in jerky, with the tip of the tongue raised against the hard palate. Try 战争 war, 珍珠 pearl, 这种 this kind. As some of you may be wondering, aren't consonants or pin initials supposed to be quiet, without the vibration of vocal cords? Why do Chinese teachers and friends say "bo c d f g" instead of "b c d f g"? 
Well, it's because when Chinese people learn pinyin at school, they're taught to pronounce them with a vowel to make the sounds clearer and easier to say. So Chinese may pronounce all the initials as bo, ci, de, fo, ge, he, ji, ke, le, mo, ne, po, qi, ri, si, te, xi, zi, chi, shi, zhi. These words you have already learned? How is our series? Is it interesting? Do you like it? Can you pronounce all these words now? How's our series? Is it interesting? Do you like it? How was it? Pretty interesting, right? Do you have any more questions? Leave them in the comments below, and I'll try to answer them. That's all for today. 今天就到这里 I'll see you in the next episode. 我们下期再见 Bye. Hi, everybody. Inru here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher. Where I'll answer most of your common Chinese questions. The question for this lesson is: How do I use the adverb "jiu"? Today we're going to show you how to use the word "jiu" in three ways. Here's the first usage: It's used before a verb to suggest the earliness and quickness of the action. For example, if someone says, "Ni jiu lai le," the implied meaning is, "Oh." You're here already. I didn't expect you to be here so soon. 我五点就到家了 I got home at five. Here it's implied that at five is considered early. 他一分钟就学会了 He got it within one minute. Second usage. It's used to connect two actions, indicating that the second action, which is the action following Jill, happens as soon as the first action is completed. Let's see some examples. 我吃完早饭就去上班了 As soon as I finished my breakfast, I went to work. 我写完报告就把电脑关了 I turned off the computer after I finished writing my report. 你一下飞机就打车回家了吗 Did you get a cab and go home as soon as you got off the plane? Third and final usage. It's also used as a conjunction word. Indicating that the second action or situation which follows "jiu" is the result of the first action or situation. 你喜欢吃就多吃点 Since you like it, eat more. 要是你不打电话给我，我就打电话给你 If you don't call me, then I'll call you. 既然他不喜欢唱歌，我们就不去卡拉 OK. Since she doesn't like to sing, we're not going to karaoke. Karaoke is a very popular entertainment in China. You will see lots of KTVs, which are karaoke places with private karaoke rooms of different sizes. These places usually serve food and beverages. 你喜欢卡拉 OK 吗？喜欢的话，我们现在就去。Do you like karaoke? If you do, let's go now. How was it? Pretty interesting, right? Do you have any more questions? Leave them in the comments below, and I'll try to answer them. 我们今天就到这里，下期再见。See you in the next episode. Bye. Hi everyone, welcome to Ask a Teacher, where I'll answer most of your common Chinese questions. The question for this lesson is, why do I hear 一下 and 一点 a lot? 一下 and 一点 or 一点 as people from North China would pronounce it. Are used in everyday language to soften the tone in imperatives. 一下 literally means one time, and 一点 literally means a little bit. Just a side note: people in North China like to use 儿化音 in their speech. 儿化音 refers to the phenomenon of adding the sound of er at the end of a word. For example, people in the South say 没事 it's okay. People from the North would say 没事 People in the south say 好玩 fun, while people in North China like to say 好玩 Let's compare some sentences with and without 一下 and 一点 You 过来 versus 你过来一下 The first sentence sounds like an order, come here. The second one sounds more like a polite request, come here for a second. 
你喝茶 versus 你喝一点茶 The first one sounds like a parent commanding you drink your tea. The second one, on the other hand, is more loving, like saying "Have some tea, honey." Since nobody wants to sound mean when they don't have to, you'll hear verb plus 一下 or 一点 in spoken Chinese. Sometimes you can omit the e in 一点 You can either say 来一点咖啡吧 Let's have some coffee, or 来点咖啡吧Or as people from North would say it with 儿化音，来点儿咖啡吧。How was it? Pretty interesting, right? Do you have any more questions? Leave them in the comments below, and I'll try to answer them. 我们下次再见吧。See you next time. Hi, everybody. Inru here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher, where I'll answer most of your common Chinese questions. The question for this lesson is: How do I decipher Chinese characters I don't know? As we mentioned in an early lesson, you need to know at least five thousand Hanzi to be able to read. Does that mean you have to memorize every single one of them? Not necessarily. Each character is made of components, which many times indicate or give hints as to what the character means. These components are called radicals or 偏旁部首 Learning some common radicals will help you recognize, remember, and reproduce characters. For example, the character "min" is made of two radicals, "ri" and "yu," meaning sun and moon. When you put the radical sun and moon together, we get the character "min," the most common meaning of which is bright. A lot of times, when you see the radical "ri" in a character, it often has something to do with the sun, like this character. 早 meaning early, and the word 早上 meaning morning. 水 means water. This radical is its variation. When you see them in a character, it usually means the character has something to do with water. 洗 to wash, 河 river, 海 ocean. 火 means fire, and this radical is its variation. When you see "huo" and this radical, the character usually is related to fire or heat. Some examples are "ru" (hot), "shao" (to burn), "deng" (light), and "yan" (smoke). "Yan" and this character are radicals for something related to speech, such as "shuo" (to say), "yu" (language), "ci" (word), "shi yan" (promise). Shi and this radical are radicals for anything related to food and drinks. For example, fan, meal or rice, bao, full, e, hungry, tanguan, restaurant. Learning Chinese characters does take a lot of time and effort, but the result sure is rewarding. After you learn some basic Chinese characters, you will even find it easier to navigate in some other countries like Japan, since Hanzi is also part of their writing system. So, if you've decided to learn Hanzi, I recommend that you start with radicals. How was it? Pretty interesting, right? Do you have any more questions? Leave them all in the comments below, and I'll try to answer them. 我们再见吧 Bye, everyone. Hi, everybody. Inru here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher, where I'll answer more of your common Chinese questions. The question for this lesson is: How do I say no to an invitation politely? Chinese people are known to be very friendly and hospitable, especially when they know you're from another country or and learning Chinese. You're probably going to be invited to their house for dinners or parties that you may not want to go to. How do you turn down these invitations without being rude? It would be ideal if a simple "不用了，谢谢 ，No, thank you" would do. But the reality is, Chinese people always try to avoid using the word "no." To turn down an invitation, you usually will first apologize for not being able to make it, then give the reasons why you can't go, just like in the following conversation. 明天有空吗？来我家吃晚饭吧。Are you free tomorrow? Come have dinner at my place. 真不好意思，明天晚上我要上课，改天吧。I'm so sorry. I have to go to a class tomorrow night. Let's do it another time. In this conversation, person B didn't say no. Instead, 
She explained why she couldn't go and suggested doing it another time. This is the Chinese way. You don't want to say the word can't, 不行 or won't do, 不好 and you'll want to explain why. Many times, you don't even have to give the real reason. You can use a very vague term like, 我有别的事情 I have other things to tend to, or, 我有别的安排 I have other plans. So, if you don't want to go to a party and don't feel like giving the real reason, you might say, 不好意思，我有别的事情去不了了。你们玩的开心。Saying no or turning down an invitation is not always easy. I believe it's not only difficult in the Chinese culture, but in many other cultures too. It's human nature that you don't want to say the word no. I hope after today's lesson, you will find a way of saying no properly and politely in Chinese. How was it? Pretty interesting, right? Do you have any more questions? Please leave them in the comments below, and I'll try to answer them. That's all for today. 我们今天就到这里 ，and I'll see you in the next episode. 我们下期再见吧。Hi, everybody. Inru here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher, where I'll answer most of your common Chinese questions. The question for this lesson is, what are Chinese characters? Chinese characters, 汉字 are logograms. These are symbols used to represent whole words. They're used in written Chinese. In English, we use an alphabet to spell out each word. However, most letters on their own don't carry a particular meaning. In Chinese, characters come with an assigned pronunciation and their own definitions. You can combine certain characters together to make words. Most Chinese words are made of one to three characters. For example, 我爱喜欢 like 冰淇淋 ice cream. As you may know, Chinese culture has had a great influence on all the cultures in East Asia. Chinese characters are great example. Hanzi have been brought to and modified in several other Asian languages, including Japanese, Korean, and Vietnamese. There are fifty thousand Chinese characters in existence, but don't be scared away. You only need three thousand to five thousand to be considered literate. It may still sound like a lot, and it does take time to memorize them, but it's not an impossible task. You can start by learning the components of characters, which are called radicals, 偏旁部首 This will make it much easier to recognize, remember, and reproduce characters. For example, the character Ming is made of two radicals, 日 and 月 sun and moon. When you put the radical sun and moon together, we get the character Ming. The most common meaning for the symbol is bright. How was it? Pretty interesting, right? Do you have any more questions? Leave them in the comments below, and I'll try to answer them. See you in the next episode. 我们下期再见吧 Want to speed up your language learning? Take your very first lesson with us. You'll start speaking in minutes and master real conversations. Sign up for your free lifetime account. Just click the link in the description.